Hello, everybody. Welcome. I warmly welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul. Um, I will guide you through this um, presentation. Um, who is presenting today? Mario is presenting today. It's a colleague of me. He's a member of Schluter and Wauer, and he knows most of Ines. He knows maybe everything of Ines control, and he will present us today the Ines Intelligent Network Control. So, Mario. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Paul, for, for the short introduction. Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, Ines, the, as I think, the intelligent network control. Um, let's start with a small overview about the products of uh, Schlothauer and Wauer and, and give it, give it, um, uh, uh, see the effect of Ines. And uh, first, we have in the pre processing um, step, there's a planning software. It's planning of traffic lights, of logic, of actuated traffic uh, light logic, and of course, of coordination and coordination rules. Uh, the next thing is the operational mode. So during the runtime of a traffic light uh, controller, um, here we have a tool called Enes. This is the network control, and this is the thing I will uh, going to talk about today. And next, on the post processing, um, we have a tool for the data analytics, and this is done by Anna, by Anna, <laughs> of course, a German. Um, and all this is. Um, orchestrative, uh, if you want to say that, from a traffic management center. So network control is part of the operational management of, uh, of traffic lights outside. So if we want to talk about traffic light, traffic lights, and of course uh, about the traffic signal programs, we have um, two typically um, traffic scenarios, um, which traffic uh, light signals are, are designed to, to handle. First thing is, the morning peak hour, you see the, the main traffic flow is from left to right. You see that we have a green wave here, which is typically designed for that main direction. So, and another very important thing is, of course, um, during the day, this scenario changes. So in the afternoon, the direction changes from right to the, uh, to the left. So the single programs in that times are especially designed to handle the traffic which goes outside the city, so their home locations, for example. So this is the need of traffic light, uh, traffic uh, signal timings, especially for traffic scenarios. This is really important to to say. So in preparation of signal timing plans, the first thing is they are designed to handle a different traffic scenarios. And they are calibrated that way. This is done by cycle time. This is done by a microscopic point of view, like uh, green waves or coordinated um, corridors. And um, this is the way uh, we, we build it up in LISA and, and test it against our simulator. The next point is um, state of the art is we have traffic actuated signal programs. That means um, for the morning peak hour, as you've seen, there is an, a mechanism which means that it's actuated to the current traffic flow and works in some, some kind of threshold, which is uh, calibrated by the signal timings. So the signal timings or the signal programs define the threshold, the limits, the boundaries where these actuated programs can work in. So if we have a closer look on, on the TLS controller, the usual thing we have here is we have a program for the um, for very low traffic volume. This is a program for the night with a really tiny cycle time. We have a programs for the daily time, that means from let's say 8 8 a.m. to to 14 p.m. Uh, to 2 p.m. And of course we have two different uh, programs for the morning and the afternoon um, uh, peak hours. And such programs are designed to fulfill the needs of capacity in the network. And of course, they want to try to reduce or decrease the waiting times in there. And there are different mechanisms uh, you can use in Lisa, for example, to, to reach that, that goal. Um, the, the, the default thing here is um, we have a selection of signal programs, which is done by time. Um, most of, Mostly it is, uh, we have that case that traffic lights are connected to a traffic server or traffic servers, um, 
which is um, combined in, in a traffic central or a central traffic server. And such a traffic server is responsible for the for the um, for the maintenance of the, of the uh, traffic lights, for the monitoring, and of course for the activated signal programs out there uh, outside. So what we can find here is that we have mostly a weekly schedule. It's called in German about uh, in English also weekly automatism. Um, this is used, and of course, this uh, WOUT um, has to be improved by um, holidays, by vacation, by special events like sport events, and so on, where the traffic scenarios are changing from the from a typical from the typical uh, days here. And uh, this um, these days um, are typically provided by the road authority here. The, the typically way, but the next thing is. Um, if you want to have a more more accurate selection of traffic uh, programs, traffic light programs, um, you can do it by measuring the traffic and adapt it your signal programs to direct that scenario. So state of the art here are two kind of approaches. Um, the first approach is using thresholds. This means um, we have a big matrices. Um, where we have uh, thresholds for the amount of traffic, for the waiting time, for queue lengths, and so on, um, combined with rules, what to do then. If the, the amount of traffic reaches that threshold, so it is necessary to switch to another program. What's really nice here for me as a traffic engineer is that we have a really good reproducible behavior. That means with a white sheet of paper and a pencil, I can reconstruct the, deci uh, the decisions which are made um, with that approach. And of course, there is no additional information required, like uh, model parameters, uh, variables, and so on. But what you need is a huge amount of parameters and parameter sets, which are all have to be adjusted and calibrated, which is, of course, a really time consuming, consuming event. And um, maybe this is done via operation. So it's just calibrate, then look again, some, spend some time, look again and see the effect. So the next system we OK, here you see a lot of variables. You see the effect. The next uh, system, of, in general, are the system of a colored black box. In a black box, we have a system which can be really, really sophisticated with a really sophisticated traffic model, with, with a lot of mathematical rules, with a lot of knowledge, and so on. And this could be very, very powerful. If you have things like uh, machine learning, uh, very, very good statistics, or artificial intelligence, and so on and so on, you can have really, 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 really good decisions. But you have to keep in mind that you need a huge amount of measurement data required just to calibrate such kind of models. Um, the piece of paper wouldn't fit <laughs> to reproduce the decisions because they are really hard and depend directly to the state of the model you have. So it's really, it could be really difficult to adjust and to calibrate. It is possible, but it's really hard to understand for me as a traffic engineer. I only see the decisions or the result, not the not the steps inside. So with Enos, and I come to that right now, we try to have a combination of the advantages of both systems. Of course, we want to have a reproducible behavior. This is done by using um, parameters, see intermediate results, see the steps we we take uh, dur during the computation. The next thing is we want to have flexibility, just to see how big our networks are, how many uh, sections we can connect and so on. And we want to have a resilience in our system. Resilience means that we want to, 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 str to strange uh, our system. That means we know over time detectors will get can get uh, corrupt, that uh, some controllers can get offline and so on. And we want to have a system which can handle exactly this, see the, the problems and can react to them. And more than a traffic dependent program selection, we also want to support actuated signal programs um, from a microscopic uh, point of view and try to, to have an adjustment of green times in there. It's just an uh, adjustment means um, that we want to decrease or increase the threshold, which is in that microscopic um, uh, signal plant. Then, of course, we want to have adjustments in the phase offsets. 
regarding um, corridors, regarding uh, big big uh, queue lengths. And of course, we want to have some influence in the ordering of signal phases. So what you see on the on the right side here is we have traffic dependent program selections. We will uh, have green time redistribution and the calibration of the phase offsets. We have an incident or traffic jam detection. And of course, we want to be free to support specific parameters or constraints. Um, to see the, the basic idea behind Enos is here the assignment of traffic scenarios. How can we decide which scenario is, is, is currently available here? This is done by the computation of the saturation value for each section. A section is the incoming edge of a, of a signalized intersection, which is described by a signal group or signal groups, and the detectors for the traffic volume. And uh, this uh, computation for the saturation is done for each, each of these uh, sections, and then we aggregate all together and build the capacity level for the whole network or for the configured network in, in Enos. And more than that, we made a computation for the waiting times, the time loss, and the number of stops um, uh, for each section and for each corridor. Um, this is because of the um, because of the signal programs for, uh, let's say, morning and uh, afternoon peak hours. We have same cycle times and maybe the same green times, but the position of the green times during the cycle could could be different. So. In cases of a coordination, the waiting times will differ really high um, regarding the amount of traffic you have uh, by specific scenarios. So we see out, uh, outside the current program which uh, green is required by the traffic volume we have, the green which is available and the and the signal times we have, and then we build up um, the util utilized utilized uh, capacity or short the utility. So when we want to configure scenario and see how good is the the signal program we have fits to the traffic scenario which which is out there, we build up some some curves like that. So we have, for example, an amount of traffic of 150 vehicles per hour, and let's see, this is a really really tiny um, uh, amount of traffic for um, maybe you see my mouse here, maybe for a program with a big cycle like 120 seconds and, and a huge green phase we see that the utility is not not that high it's below um a uh, three quarters here and for um a single program with a short uh, cycle time let's say 80 seconds uh, 80 seconds we see that the utility is very high that means if you have a low traffic volume a program for the peak hours doesn't fit as well as a program for the for the night times or for the day times. So the utility for that program is much higher than this. That means the same traffic volumes doesn't mean the same utility for that both um, programs. And of course, small signal cycles have um, advantages because they are well suited for pedestrians, for example. So we want to find the best programs which fits to to the scenario. Um, Let's come to Enos and just just a small screenshots from the from the user interface of Enos. Um, the first thing is we have to um, import the uh, parameter of the um, of the signal controllers. This is done by a uh, standard way. This is um, done with uh, OSIT XML files. So you press the button import. You get all the values in there, and um, then you can start your configuration. Um, this step avoids us. From, from configuration of ID numbers of the controller. Um, for example, to get the information we need, like uh, signal times and uh, traffic volumes and so on, we need IDs, especially for OSIT. And all that IDs are inside of that XMLs. So if you, if you um, import them, you have it directly and you can use it for uh, requests and also for switching commands, for example. The next thing is that we have to configure sections. Sections are defined by signal groups and the corresponding detectors. This is done directly by linking it to the corresponding elements of the OSIT structure. And of course, here we have a section which have multiple incoming detectors and uh, of course outgoing detectors. You can have multiple signal groups here. 
And of course, if you have some missing detectors, you can also use uh, detectors for uh, for the same directions from, from another section. All this is possible here. The next thing is uh, bring together that sections to, uh, to a network. This is um, this is done by uh, building a network by combining all the all the sections, and uh, of course you can you can build up uh, coordinated routes or corridors. Uh, we have also in in Enos. And the first thing you see here it's another screenshot. You see on the um, on the right side here we have different modes of our networks. This is all networks. This is um, a screenshot of uh, Bogota. And here we see the word shadow, and shadow means um, we have a shadow mode, which means we made an active computation of um, of the traffic dependent signal uh, select uh, signal program selection, but we have no no active uh, control commands to the controller. So this is very very good for calibration and to see the effect of that control. So this is the first thing we we do. Let's check if we get all the detector values, all the responsible values we have, see if the if the calibration is correct and, and see the outcome. The, the first step is the shadow mode always. Next thing is um, we're also using strategic detectors. Strategic detectors are detectors which can uh, measure um, the traffic volume and alter the velocity. So we use that kind of detectors for uh, measuring the incidence and of course the level of service which is directly related to the fundamental diagram. So what we have here, we have a continuous uh, measurement data. And what we want to have is um, we want that it fits directly to, to um, a level of service or uh, traffic, a traffic situation. So what we did is um, to implement a fuzzy logic, continuous values to a discrete decision. And uh, you, can, you, can you can see it a bit here and you can see it here, what the levels we have. So we use that detectors to see incidents in the network and see if we can change signal programs or not. Uh, the next thing is the definition of uh, inner scenarios or traffic scenarios. Um, this is done by uh, calibration, like uh, you can see here. This is an example <laughs> for, uh, for a program for really high traffic volumes. You can see it here. The 100% flow ratio, which means um, queue lengths are not <laughs> are not avoidable, and this is uh, uh, up to here. This is 100% utility, and this is the way it goes up. And the next thing is um, there are some counters also. It's the cycle time, and you can decide how many scenario uh, nodes scenario nodes are the signalized intersections you want to have in your in uh, in your scenario. <clears throat> and how the program is known at the traffic light controller. Um, regarding existing traffic light controllers, this can be differ. The same, uh, the same uh, cycle time can differ in the name at the, at the signal controllers. So next thing we have is uh, a switching matrix of the signal program. That means we will have constraints in the uh, constraints and conditions for the switching um, of signal program. That means um, a program for very low traffic volume cannot easily be switched to a program with a really high for a really a really high traffic volume, for example, from 80 to, to 120. So we can we can do it here. But another fact is if we have um, two signal programs with an equal um, cycle time. This is important for the synchronization of the signal programs at the, at the signal controller. We can switch it really fast. This is done by some, some counters and of course by that kind of matrix here. You can also avoid some, some switching here. Um, so let's see it in action. <laughs> um, I have here a screenshot of a, of a real implementation of Enos, and what you can see here is over the day, over a couple of hours, you see the average saturation for the network. You can see it in a graph, and you see here the saturation for each section, you see the volumes and so on. Of course, one thing which is really interesting, you see the arrows here. Arrows means uh, you can download that, that data to CSV files and, and use it in Excel and so on. We are really open in, in, in that field. And with that um, average saturation, we can compute the utility for each program. And what you can see here is 
Um, we have a chart over the day and we have some programs here where the utility is best. So all, all the, the maximum values here are defined the programs which are selected by Inas. And you can see here the utility for each program for each timestamp. So this is the idea of Inas. <laughs> Um, the next thing is uh, we want to have an influence on the microscopic uh, microscopic um, signal plants here or the actuated uh, signal program, but from a microscopic point of view. So the adjustment of green times of the signal program, this is done by um, by analysis of a corridor, for example. And then what we do is we send some commands to the traffic light controller which um, influenced the thresholds of green times, for example. And the, um, the, the uh, traffic signal um, will get that information. And in the microscopic behavior of that uh, traffic light, uh, of, the, of that traffic signal, this is um, accepted or not, <laughs> uh, regarding if you're right or not. But we don't disturb the microscopic behavior of that of that intersection. This is this is um, important to say. And the delivery here is we are using OSET and we're using um, AP values. We have currently we have three different modes um, where where we use such kinds green time redistribution. One thing is handle overload means um, if we have a saturated or oversaturated situation, we try to to give all the green. To, to that oversaturated um, section. Next thing is uh, maximum optimization. Um, here we want to, to share the green time with that sections um, where, where we are able to, to bring more green here. And the next thing is priority. That means if you have a coordination or a coordinated uh, corridor here, you can, you can put in some priority values and the uh, the uh, available green terms are uh, put directly to that prior prioritized um, sections. That's the the last node. Maybe in the future there will be more. And here you see the effect of that. Um, before we have a pre-saturation here. This is um, uh, I think a saturation of one. We are over that, and with the the um, uh, the green time redistribution, we bring the saturation down here. And of course, we increase from another section the, the saturation, of course. So the next part is um, the support of green waves and the green corridor. This is done with the idea of trigger and blocker elements. That means we are using strategic detectors to do that, to see if there is a congestion on a coordinated route or not. So if a detector says um, we, have a, we have a congestion, uh, on our corridor, we have a trigger which says, okay, I, I need another program just to work fine here. And the secondary lanes, which uh, beside the, that uh, corridor, don't say, no, this is not okay, or my traffic demand is, is high enough, uh, is, is low enough, you can, you can do it. We don't have a blogger, we only have a trigger, so we can have a direct influence to the signal phases and maybe deny some signal phase for, for the secondary roads, for example. And that's kind of adjustments um, are also done by OSET and have a behavior directly to the signal phases. So I come to, to the end and I give a small conclusion. The idea of Enos is to be transparent as possible. We will have reproducible decisions. We have transparent algorithms, see what's inside, how, how, it, how it works. It's effective. It's an effective calibration via a user interface by by importing uh, important values. The number of parameters is, is really more or less small, and of course we have a cool user-friendly user interface. It's a web interface here. It's a modular system, which means um, we we can use it really uh, flexible. It's scalable. Just for the for the questions, how many networks are supported? As much as you have more memory <laughs> would be my answer here. And it's really easy to integrate. And extensible it is also. So we support, of course, free and proprietary interfaces to the uh, process data as well as the um, uh, traffic light controllers. And of course, we will integrate in the present infrastructure. 
so this is the core ideas of Inas. Just to give a, an outlook here, we uh, until now we have various installations in Germany, which is growing up right now, in South America and Russia. Um, more will follow. Um, in the future, we want to support many detectors. And here regarding the measurement values, so which type of, of uh, thing is, is measured, like the air pollution, which we bring in to have a decision made on air pollution, or tunnels and restrictions here. And in the near future, I see also the integration of V2X information, like journey times, like the end of queue lengths, and so on we can have here. So I am at the end, and say thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mario. Here could, could be the applause. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you now have questions, please write it into the chat and I will um, read them and ask them to Mario. Or you can also, if you are now very impressed by the presentation and do you have any question afterwards, you can also write a mail to service at schlotor.de.